Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave, and today I'm going to show you a little project that I got involved with. It's called Nexus Aurora. Nexus Aurora will take Mars that looks like this and turn it into this. And in just a minute, I'm going to show you how that can happen. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets me know you're enjoying these videos. I'm sure the first thing you're asking is, how is this even possible? Before I tell you how, I'm going to tell you why. I saw a request for international teams to enter a contest started by the Mars Society called the Mars City State Design Competition. The goal of this competition is to propose a design that would allow a city on Mars be built and maintained that would hold, house, feed, and permit one million humans to live comfortably on Mars. This city of one million would need to be self-supporting. It would need to be able to both produce essential bulk products like food and construction materials all on Mars and also be able to fabricate them into useful structures. And all this with limited imports from Earth. So I set out to see if I could find enough interested people to participate in this contest. I was very skeptical that I could find enough interested and talented people to make this possible. Luckily for me, a very enthusiastic international businessman named Adrian Moisa, owner of Visual School that also happens to be a subscriber of this channel, jumped in with both feet to help with the project. With his help, we now have multiple volunteering teams working on this project. I think when I last checked, we had slightly over 200 volunteers all helping with the competition. Each one of these teams has a team lead. And so you can get a better understanding of the reason to build a city on Mars. I asked one of our multi-team leaders, Jacob Berg, here today to answer some of these questions for us. Jacob has his master's degree in civil engineering and is working toward his Ph.D. in construction management. I'd like to welcome Jacob here all the way from Denmark. Hello, Jacob, and welcome to Mars or Bust. We're thrilled to have you with us today. Hi, Dave. And thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, yeah, I've really been looking forward to talking to you and uh, also to uh, talk a bit about uh, Nexus Aurora. Hey, Jacob. I wanted to get your opinion. There's a lot of people out there that think we shouldn't even be bothering going into space with all the problems that are happening right now. What's your thoughts on that? So, first of all, because it's there. Space is this endless frontier and we as a human civilization and the species always try to go where we are not now and strive to make that uh, a new place for us to call home. So why space? Well, because that is where we are going to be in the future, all of us. All that makes a lot of sense. But the question I'm wondering is, why Mars? Why is everybody so hyped up on Mars or so many other planets available out there? Well, we have two planets close by. One is boiling hot, and one sometimes becomes 20 degrees. So, I take the one that doesn't melt lead all the time. Of course, Venus has its pros. It has a lot of atmosphere, and Mars almost doesn't have any. But Mars is by far the fastest uh, to get a civilization going, uh, if that is your goal. And because we are building a city of for one million people, that is our goal. So Mars is the logical choice when you have the two planets close by that we have. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there that say they want to go to Mars. I'm included in that. How about you, Jacob? Would you ever want to go to Mars? I would definitely like to retire on Mars. 
I still have a lot of stuff to do here on Earth, and I have a family to raise, but it's definitely something that I would like to do at some point in my life. I will not be the first. Somebody else more qualified and more brave than I will be. But I will definitely see if that can be a possibility. So what's the reason for doing a design competition for a city on Mars? Maybe you can explain that to us a little better. Competitions are fun. They always push people more than they would like to admit. And having a design competition for Mars makes you think uh, those weird ideas all of a sudden have to go on paper and you have to show them to somebody else and all of a sudden you find out all the flaws that you have. So having a competition to see who can come up with the best or most credible uh, plan for having a million people on Mars, it's just a way to get all of us daydreamers to actually put some pen to paper and figure it out, really, instead of just thinking about it. So. Thank you very much to the Mars Society for putting together this uh, really cool competition. Okay, so there's a lot of people out there that would disagree with you. People feel that sometimes it doesn't make any sense to spend all that money, go all the way to Mars, on the chance that maybe you'll benefit from it in some way. What would you say to them? You see it sometimes um, that... It's debated, well, if we have all of these problems on Earth, why would we go to space? Why lose all of the money on these big fancy rockets? And why do I need to fund this? Why does these private people put billions of dollars into these weird things that will never pay off and they will never get their money back? Um, well, the thing is that uh, so far, expanding humanity to push the brightest among us to better themselves and do something that they didn't think possible. When you put a bunch of 20 something year olds in a room and say, you have to build something that goes to the moon and you have to do that in 10 years. Well, they could and they did. Um, I think the next 20 something year olds, 30 something year olds for my part, we can put people on Mars in 10 years. That's a uh, given at the moment. Uh, now we have to have the push to actually do it. And along the way, we will probably invent tons of stuff. Highly likely that will improve the lives of everybody on Earth from understanding bone loss better, bone loss medication. If you can grow food on Mars, you can grow food anywhere on Earth. But we have to go to Mars to solve them. Okay, so what type of buildings do we build on Mars? And how do we build them? What kind of materials do we use to build them? Do we haul everything here from Earth? So I mean the team that works on uh, buildings made from regolith. That's a fancy name for Mars dirt or dirt from a planetoid or planet. Um, regolith is really nice because it's there already and you don't have to transport it and building stuff out of something that's already there is always good. I usually make the analogy that we didn't take all of the log timber uh, for making the settlers' houses in the United States from Europe. Uh, they cut them down from the forest there. And so we don't want to do the same thing with, uh, we don't want to do uh, it any differently on Mars. So we basically want to figure out how to use Mars regolith for all of what we need when it comes to building. So we built domes, basically. That's what it ends up becoming. Once you factor in that you have to have pressure and you have to have a certain mass to make sure that you don't have radiation and all sorts of other things, domes just start to make sense very, very fast. Domes and half tubes uh, or full tubes, depending on what you want to do. Uh, you can, of course, also bury into the ground, but uh, excavating things is hard on Earth, and it's even harder on Mars. Uh, that's not to say that not certain people are looking at how to make excavation a lot more simple and a lot faster, but so far, um, yeah, uh, it's a hard challenge for them. So uh, 
I think that above ground domes are the way to go for the first parts of the master elements. So far, those are the designs that, that we've come up with. So what is the difference between Nexus Aurora and, say, the space station? Couldn't they just build the equivalent of that on Mars and be done with it? The main thing that you have to design for when you're designing stuff on Mars is that you have another radiation environment that you have in low Earth orbit. So at the International Space Station, uh, you still have all of this magnetic shielding around you. So something like intergalactic uh, cosmic rays, um, that's not really so much of an issue. When it comes to Mars, it's something you have to live with every day. And the way you stop that radiation is that you use very light uh, elements. Hydrogen is the best liquid hydrogen, if you can get it in just a big layer between you and the sky, it's absolutely the best. But you can also use the hydrogen if it's inside of something, for instance, polymers. Um, so you can make polymers from water and CO2 in the Martian atmosphere. And once you have the polymers, you can use them to bind the regoliths together. So basically making a Martian version of concrete which is uh, really strong, and it also takes care of that pesky radiation. Okay, so what are some of the important differences between building on Earth and building on Mars? How is it going to differ? So I'm a trained civil engineer uh, from Earth. All of my textbooks are based on that I'm building stuff in one atmosphere and that the Gravity is 1G Earth normal and all of these things. And so as soon as you start to transport stuff to Mars, then all of a sudden, all of those assumptions go out the window. One of the things is that building pressurized habitats really puts a lot of stuff on its head. So instead of things falling down, they rupture instead, uh, they form cracks. Uh, and you have to control for that. And you also uh, don't have sort of the same problem with that your thin wall structures are sort of very um, close to uh, buckling if they're very, I mean, basically you have the, the soda can analogy. The soda can is extremely thin wall metal, but because you have pressure inside, it can be that thin and still be really, really strong. You get the same thing with the structures on Mars, as long as you keep them can or dome shaped. As soon as you try to milk something that's not can or dome shaped, it will sort of the the pressure inside will fight the material to uh, to, to get into that shape. So uh, it's definitely something that you have to be aware of when you are building something on Mars instead of building something on Earth. Three D printing is becoming more and more popular every day. Do you think it's going to play a big part on Mars? Three D printing is a fascinating. Uh, technology and 3D printing houses will be a thing. It's not a thing yet, and I don't know of any real commercial application of 3D printing on Earth. One of the reasons is that it's really hard to make it work all the time. And also, usually 3D printing works if you're going to do complex shapes and if you're going to do something where you need a minimal amount of material. We in the beginning of Mars, don't have any of those constraints. We want to build something that's very simple, and we don't really care if we need to scoop on some extra regolith. That's not our design constraint. We basically have to build stuff very fast and very simple, and with as few materials from Earth as possible. Uh, and a 3D printer is a large machine uh, that needs to have something with a specific consistency. Um, and I know there are plans to make these habitats on Mars, which are 3D printed and they look really pretty. Um, and I think they will be there in time. I think the first ones will be very quick, very dirty structures. And we want to also make sure that we have the designs for those. So, the way I'm understanding this, is this going to be a city of one million people? Isn't it going to be pretty tight? I mean, cramped? It's going to be hard to move around a lot of people in a small area? 
actually you are able to make quite a lot of space on Mars, sort of indoor space, pressurized space. Uh, if you use uh, materials from your surroundings, and um, the low gravity and the thing that that sort of that that every structure will have, which is internal pressure, actually it means that you can build something really, really large, like very large domes, very large tubes. Um, it's not inconceivable to have more than 100 square meters per person, uh, sort of as a, um, as a gross area, um, gross target area. Um, so it definitely doesn't have to be cramped. Maybe for the first people who have to live in their actual spaceship once they've just landed, will be slightly cramped. But uh, give them a couple of months, and I think they have put up their first uh, big dome. And then from there, uh, they can expand, and of course, a lot of people will land in other uh, spaceships. And yeah, I think it will be a very, very beautiful site. Also, pretty interesting. So what I'm hearing from all this is it's going to be a large city. Is it going to be like New York or San Francisco or maybe Miami? What do you think it's going to end up looking like? Well, that's actually it. Because I think that the city of Mars for one million people will look different depending on um, where you look and when the structures were built. I think you will find that it will look very much like... Uh, sort of the old uh, cities in Europe, where you have this very old core of old buildings. They will probably be near, uh, instead of a railway station, which it is in, in old European cities, the city center um, will be closer to the spaceport, um, where you get all of the materials in and the new people and stuff like that. So you will have the old buildings, the ones that were built first, Standing there, uh, probably going to be a lot of uh, domes made out of uh, regolith and polymer, uh, set together with a lot of tubes. Uh, I sort of liken it to uh, maybe sort of a hobbit village spliced with uh, a moisture farm from Tatooine kind of feel for that part of the city. And then from there, you sort of expand out to the getting more uh, domes made with the uh, with acrylics, uh, you have a better production, local production of steel, so you can put in some steel with that acrylic. Uh, um, maybe you will have some aluminum or something like that that is also produced locally on Mars. And then after that, I mean, it's basically going to be um, a full fledged economy. Like, uh, who wants to build a, a massive uh, dome out of carbon fiber? Uh, who needs a, a massive uh, structure of, of aluminum. Um, and then um, you will start to see people building stuff like the, the Burj Khalifa, which doesn't make sense from a construction point of view, but it's big and it shows what you can do. And you will find the same thing on Mars. People don't change that easily. Well, Jacob, being that we're working together, I can't wait to see how this city is going to turn out. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. So you take care. It's been great talking to you. I hope we can do this again real soon. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. So see you around. Bye. So that's just a quick overview of what Nexus Aurora is. I'll be bringing you more updates over the next few weeks. But here's a few renderings of what some of these volunteering professionals have in mind. And if you think this is something you'd like to participate in, I'll leave all the details down in the description. We'd love to have you on the team.